Have you always wanted to get beautiful images like these on the graphing screen of your TI-84 Plus calculator? Well then look no further because this is the video for you. Hi, I'm Aiden and today I'm going to show you how to get any photo you want onto your TI-84 Plus calculator. Let's get started. Alright, the first thing I'm going to do is briefly walk through how this process works. So first things first, you need to start with a photo. You can take the photo yourself or you can, you can get it from online, but you need to import that photo into your Google Drive and you need to put it in a folder that you have named. And then once you've done that, you need to use this Python script, which I'll have linked below, and it's going to look at that photo in that folder and then you're going to select an option and it's going to output a string of binary. And then you take that string of binary and you paste it into a TI basic code in the TI Connect app on your computer. And then it's gonna, you're going to import that into your calculator and then run that program. And then it's going to draw the image on the screen of your calculator. And then once that's done, you can save it and you can recall it as many times as you want. It's going to be in your calculator permanently unless you delete it. And this process uses an algorithm called dithering. Dithering takes an image like this, which has, you know, white, gray, and black pixels, and it converts it into just black and white pixels, which is perfect for what we need for this calculator because obviously it's only a pixel that's on or off. And the last thing I'm going to say is what you need for this, obviously you need your TI-84 Plus calculator. You also need the TI Connect app on your computer. You need Google Drive and Google Colab, and then you need this connection wire for the TI-84 Plus calculators. All right, now I'm going to walk through an example. All right, first thing you need to do is get the photo that you want to upload to the calculator. I'm going to, I'm going to be working with this photo that I found in my camera roll. It is a zoomed in picture of my face. And what's really important with the photo is that it takes up most of the screen. And, you know, this is around this, the dimensions of the calculator screen. So not much is going to be cropped out when we turn it into the calculator photo. It also has pretty good contrast. It's got a white background, but then, you know, slightly dark face values. So I think it'll be represented well in the black and white pixels. But I can't emphasize this enough. You have to have a photo that could be easily represented in a really, really low resolution because the calculator has a very low resolution. You got to pick a good image for this process. So I'm going to take this photo and I'm going to upload it into a folder I have in my Google Drive called Images. You can title your folder something different, but you're going to need to change the code later if you do that. So I'm taking the folder, and I'm moving the photo into the folder. Also, the file needs to be something simple like a JPEG or a PNG. HEICs do not work with this code. So this is a JPEG, and it's called example.jpg. So next I'm going to go to the Google Colab code, and this code and the TI Basic code will be in a link in the description of this video on my website. So I'm going to briefly work, go through how this code works. First, it imports some libraries and connects to your Google Drive. You will need to sign in when it works the, when it does this the first time. Then it's going to look for the folder with the image in it, in it. And this is where you can change the name of your folder if you need to. And then this is where you need to change the name of your image. So ours is called example.jpg. And then it does a lot to change the aspect ratio and dimensions of the image because it needs to change the ratio but not, not stretch the image at all. So it looks for the middle and it changes the, the dimensions of that. And the next thing it does is very important. It gives you a lot of different contrast values of the image so that you can choose the best one. It also increases the exposure, changes it to grayscale, this is also another important line. This is where it does the dithering algorithm, changing it to black and white pixels. And last thing, it, it gives a string in ones and zeros that you're going to then put into the TI Basic code. And it has a very specific format so that it works with the code. Okay, so now that the name is input in the code and the picture is in the Google folder, I can run the code. And you're going to see it's making a lot of images here. All right, it's done. So I'm going to go to the top photo. So you can see this photo, you know, it looks pretty bad. You can't really tell what the image is other than it's a face. And this is because it has 0% increased contrast. Now, as you scroll down, you're going to see 
it's going to have 10%, 20%. And you can see the, the image gets a little bit better, a little bit more clear. You can kind of see what's happening more in the image. But then, you know, near the end, it gets a little bit too fuzzy. It's not as good anymore. So you need to find the photo in the middle, which has the best contrast and can be represented best by these pixels. I'm going to say it's the 80% increased contrast. And so that I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is double click this long string and copy it. So that's the long binary string. The, it's ones and zeros. Ones are off pixels and zeros are on pixels. So you can see it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six off pixels and then a bunch of on pixels. And that's represented going top left to right and then down a row left to right. So like these are all off and then it's going to be a bunch of on ones, off, on, and that's how it's going to work. So I've copied that string and I'm now going to put it into the program in TI Connect. So I'm going to open TI Connect. I'm going to find the program. Now this program is called Image, and once again, it's going to be in a link in the description. So the first thing you're going to do, you're going to need to paste that binary string into uh, this area so that it goes in and it makes it a list. And once again, this is a very, very long string. A lot of pixels are being represented. And I'm going to briefly go through how this program works. So ClearDraw clears the graphing screen. And then it makes this bit this big list of the pixels, and then it's starting in the it's starting one pixel right of the top left pixel because the way this works out is, it can't all the pixels cannot be represented in individual numbers in the list or values in the list because the calculator does not have a lot of space on it. It does not work very well. So it's it's eight pixels per value in the list, and then the way that works out with how many pixels there are in the calculator, there's one extra pixel. So the first thing it does is just it just text is that pixel on and then it starts at the one next to it. And then this goes through and it says, okay, is this one on? No. Okay. Then it keeps going. This is this on? Yes. Turn it on. And it's going to go all the way right down a row, all the way right. And then at the end, it's going to delete the list, which is important because this, is, this, this takes up a lot of space. You're going to want to go on in your calculator. So the next step is to import this a program to the calculator and I'm going to set up the calculator now. All right, I've got the calculator camera set up now. So now what I can do and the calculator is plugged in and on to my computer. I'm going to send the program to the calculator. This is the calculator. You can see it here. I'm going to send it and you're going to see on the calculator it's loading. All right, that means it's sent. So now when we look in the programs, you should see that there is a program called image here. And I'm going to run that. But before you do, you have to do something very important. You have to go to the memory of the calculator and you have to archive absolutely every single program you have. I'm leaving one program open called Gallery, which is how I look at the other photos. And you can see this image program here. So this is just how many bytes are in the program. But once it makes the list, it's gonna add even more bytes. So you gotta archive every program and every picture you have, except whatever picture you're gonna save this to because you need as much space as possible to run this program. All right, so I'm gonna leave the memory. I'm gonna to go to program and I'm gonna run the throw away program called image and you'll see what happens. Okay, so it's starting. So it's going top left to, to bottom right and it's just drawing the image, this image right here. And I'll do a quick time lapse right now while this finishes. It takes about two to three minutes. All right, as you can see, the program just finished running. It's on the graph screen. You can leave the graph screen and go back and it's still there. And on your calculator, you're able to save eight photos, photos one through nine. And so how you do that is you go to second draw, you're going to store and you're going to store pick. I'm going to store mine as picture number two. Now this photo is in the memory of the calculator. So I can remove this photo, for example, like doing second draw, clear draw, it's now off the graph screen, it's gone. But if I go back to the home screen, I do second draw, recall picture, 
recall the picture number two, it's back. And you can see it was very helpful that we chose a picture with a light background, so there's a lot of contrast. And I might later show how you can touch up photos, like at removing these lines. It's a lot harder to erase pixels than to draw them, but I might do this in a future video. But as you can see, this photo is done. It is on the calculator and it looks pretty good. And so that's the end of the tutorial. I'll see you guys next time.